I've got Hogwarts. Yeah. Uh, well, you should yeah. see a doctor about that, I think. I'm hoping it'll just clear up on its own. <laughs> yeah, it never does. <laughs> We've always known, but now at least you're yeah. coming out with it. It's great, though. <laughs> it's great. It's good. You love it. Yeah. I love I'm, having I'm glad Hogwarts. I got it. <laughs> I don't regret. I wasn't sure about getting Hogwarts, but then I got Hogwarts, and now I love having Hogwarts. Now I just want to like spread it to other people, <laughs> no, and tell them how great it is, tell people about how how good my Hogwarts. Yeah, are. yeah. Hey, welcome to episode 163 of Frenzy Gamer. I'm Nick. I'm here with Paul. Hey. And Blake. Hey. How's it going, guys? Good. Good. Yeah, good. That was the correct order. It was the correct order. I feel comfortable. Good. Um, let's make it feel much more uncomfortable. Blake, what have you been playing? Oh, God. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've still been playing Hogwarts. Uh -huh. um, so last time we were had a long discussion about what the heck levels mean. Yeah. Um, did you and, figure it out? And we were like, yeah. So we were just like, what are they for? I don't know. Maybe they're just yeah. like a signal for boss enemies yeah. or whatever. Like after the podcast, I'd played maybe like 20 minutes and then mm -hmm. I unlocked talents, which you gain yeah. a talent after every level. Okay. Yep. Um, so there, I figured that out. <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> Often I think we, we will run our mouths on this podcast. Um, really? Uh-huh. Yeah, and uh, and and make fools of ourselves. With I, that, you know, a, a little modicum of research would have solved so many things. We talked a little bit about uh, Disco Elysium, and I was like, "Oh, what's combat like? There's, it, there's no combat in Disco Elysium, and like famously so, apparently." Like, <laughs> famously, <laughs> I guess no it's one of the things about that game is like it's yeah. all it's a it's a it's essentially a tabletop RPG without yeah. combat. But so many, so many games have combat that that is tends to be like the the main point of a lot of yes. games. Yes. But you know but you know, if if I had Googled Yeah, but we're not gonna do that. We're not doing that. What do you think this is? Um, I, well that's my point I guess is like I feel like it's okay to talk a, through an opinion that you currently believe to be true. Yeah. It, it, yes, I think so too. But it does you know, this is this is also a, this is admittedly a uh, podcast about video games by video game developers who, and, and then sometimes we we talk about things that we literally have no idea about. Yeah, well, it doesn't <laughs> help. Like I, I did, I did preface a lot that like I have barely gotten anywhere in that story. Or, yeah, through the did. like progress. Yes. Like I played a lot of hours, but not actually progressed it, very far. It, it, it is interesting that they allow you to do that, go through all of that rigmarole yeah. without unlocking what I would define as like probably a kind of a core feature yeah pretty much is it it totally is like it unlocks so you've got like uh you've got like four spell slots from yep. the beginning right uh talents just unlock more slots wow so i was just going through the game with like i don't know like a, uh probably eight nine ten different spells yeah and i could only use four of them at a time mm -hmm. so i was constantly like switching to yep. the menu reassigning them like doing all this and i was right. like Man, this is tough. I wish there was like more spell slots. It's interesting, but, but and it's it's uh yeah, and you can swap them at any time. Yeah, that seems weird. You could just pause. You could just pause. Go to yeah. your spell slot menu thing. Swap them. Go back to the game. Cast that spell. Pause. Yeah. Swap. Swap them back out. You know what I'm gonna. You know what example I'm gonna draw. On I mean, is is Zelda? Of course, it's Zelda. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> I just think about okay. In terms of features that they give you the the player at the start of the game, yeah. you get all of your, you know, before you can leave that tutorial island, you get all of your core mechanics, yep. and you also learn how to upgrade your health, yep, or stamina, yep. Um, you know what they don't teach you is about the Korok seeds and the upgrade mechanic of like upgrading your pack, yeah, which is something I missed on my first playthrough. What like, did you do with the Korok seeds? Nothing. <laughs> Did you ever meet that character? Then? No, because you you meet I him. I don't think I ever used them for anything in the time I played. Do you did you know about them? Like, did you know that there was a purpose to them? No, I was collecting them. They're I just thought you were supposed to collect them. So there's a guy called Hestu, I think. Yeah, uh, and he's on the road, um, towards, uh, Kakariko Village, I think. If you sort of take the main path, so you go through the the split mountains, mm. um, and 
there's like a little farm area and then you're kind of told to generally go to towards Kakariko village and if you take the path like up the side of the mountain towards Kakariko there's a giant Korok standing on the side of the road and you talk to him and he'll let you upgrade trade in some Korok seeds to upgrade your your pack like it lets you carry more interesting more bows more shields mm, yeah. more weapons um, and he only lets you do that a couple times, and then he vanishes and goes to like um, uh, uh, another like uh, stable thing. Um, I think so. You encounter him a few times where wherever he like. I think runs I think it's a stable, to. and yeah. and, uh, and that kind of repeats there. And then finally, he goes to uh, the Deku village where he's there permanently. Mm. Um, and if you miss those two things. You just, he's not in the Deku village, in the Korok yeah. village. You, you just don't get to upgrade your like stuff. He's, he's, and I made, <laughs> I made it really far through that game with like the starting four weapon slots or whatever. Yeah. Sound familiar, That's Blake? Tough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that sounds real familiar. <laughs> that is tough. Um, that's that's uh, I'm just thinking of like how you missed him because like they put him on that, that main road because I think they betting on most people yes. taking the main road. Yes. But if you were an adventurous sort, you might be like... Yeah. I had climbed up the side of the mountain yeah. to the left, of, yep. and I was like exploring the, the broken mountain area, and like there's like some plateaus yeah. and little, little camps along the mountain ridge, and just all sorts of stuff if he, to if do. He was, if he was in that village, much easier, because you already have yeah. a quest to like go to that village. Yep. So if he was there... Yep. You know. but even then, you the, that game is so open, you yeah. don't have to go to that village. You, I mean that's true. You don't have to, but like you, you literally have, have a quest to... that says go to that village. Yes. Yeah. So but it is. It. Uh, I would consider that probably a, almost a core mechanic mm. to be able to carry more stuff. Yep. And I missed it. Yep. I maxed and, out all my my and, slots in that game. Eventually. And Blake, you you missed it. <laughs> uh well, I mean, although it is part of your main quest, it is part of the main quest. So you do eventually, like, if you continue on the main quest then you will eventually unlock talents, which unlock more spell slots and unlock a bunch of other passives, yep. basically, to all your spells. Yep. Um, something I noticed was that the you you, I was level, uh, I think, 16 or something mm -hmm. when I unlocked these talents. Yeah. Uh, and the f there's a thing that says uh, the, first, the first row of talents you cannot access until you're level 5. So I mm. think they were... Exp this is... Mm -hmm. To me, mm -hmm. where they were expecting yeah. most people to be is level five. Yeah, I didn't 16. get there until level sixteen. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but they give you, they gave me a whole bunch of talents to all assign at once. Yeah, which then is a bit of a problem of like, where do I spend? Where it do all? I where do I put them all? Yeah. Like, so I just spent like ages like looking through all the talents and seeing what actually like I want. As mm. soon as I saw more spell slots, I was like, yep, get those. Do do do. Um, but uh, yeah, it's uh. It's good. It's good. Uh, You're having a good time? I'm having a good time. Um, I didn't talk about combat in the last episode. How's, how's the combat? It's so much fun. So just to verify, this is a game that has combat. I want to be, I be <laughs> how sure 100% you? sure about oh, this. Did you, did you Google it and uh, see, do some research? <laughs> that this I, is, I don't want to go down a rabbit hole here <laughs> where we're discussing this theoretical thing that doesn't actually apply. We well, I'm at sure... least two like, legitimate sources... Decide them at the end of the episode. Yeah. It'll be in the show notes. Yeah, yeah. We, we can get some, some video clips. Get those verified. They're not deep fakes. <laughs> um, the combat is um, Arkham style. I would call it okay. where you get oh. the you get the flash above your head, and you hit like a counter button yeah. that then performs like this counter attack, um, and that is so much fun. I like that. I quite like that. Like everybody just loves that combat in general, mm. and it did show up in like. A lot of games after Arkham, but mm -hmm. like it, it suits this really well, I think. Yeah. Um, because there's like it does this counter where, yeah, you block something and then you, you cast a spell to counter it. And I like that at least one of the spells, because there's so many spells in this game, at least one of the spells is just an auto cast, like you don't have to do that mm. yourself. Uh huh. Um, and then, yeah, you're cycling through, uh, all your all your spells now that I've got like more unlocked, I can actually like yep. do better combos. Mm -hmm. um, they have a uh, there is a quest where you learn a bunch of combos, but here the, the thing is, I had uh, just because I was roaming around the world, 
I had actually like figured out combos on my own, mm. um, which I thought was like, I, I felt like I was a very smart person. Yeah. And, and then they, I find. They hold you through yeah, this. Yeah. And no, then no I way. find a, a mission that's like, here, now I'm going to teach you to use these combos. And I was like, what? Now that I've already done this. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, I think it's to it the game's testament that you were able to get as far as you did. Yeah. And, and learn those mechanics without ever being. Yeah. Well, it's, taught. you, you start, and, you do start off with like a limited amount of moves like you yeah. have the four spells yeah well you had you you have more than four spells even from the beginning but like only really four or five kind of combat spells yeah. so they're the ones that are mainly on on my um shortcuts yeah uh and very quickly you realize that like okay you got one spell that's like a fire cast thing but it's short range yep so and you have one spell that drags people towards you mm. i mean of obvious combo there mm. you've yeah. also got Use your fire spell yeah hit nothing and then drag someone towards the yeah the and then run away screaming <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and they've also got a spell that lifts people up in place yeah uh so the combo is you lift people up you shoot them a couple of times drag them towards you um use your flame thing yep toast them toast them and and you know there's that's the combo and then in the actual like mission in the in the quest for learning these yeah it just tells you straight how to do yeah. that and i was like oh <laughs> i was already doing that um i feel like that's a lot cooler to have discovered yourself yeah beforehand. yeah even I would agree afterwards with that. it is making sure that everyone yeah knows. yeah i like I, think... I i get it and it's like it's framed around a um a sort of dueling underground dueling mm. kind of thing mm. that these students are doing yeah um so that i mean it's kind of cool that way but like you could just be like, uh, I, I guess you could have players who are just like, I don't want to use this like uh, levitation spell or this mm. like bringing, like, I just want to use the fire spells or anything that like, mm. like does damage. So you could be playing like um, really inefficiently and not actually realize it. Yep. Um, and doing the combos actually adds more damage to your spells mm. uh, to, so it th does that you'll feel do really yeah yeah really worth doing because you have you have a um because i'm playing on controller and you have a trigger button that just shoots like like a like a like a beam kind of thing like a lasers like a laser you know from your <laughs> wand that's just like it just shoots like a choo 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 yeah. kind of thing yep um there's no like special spell around it it's just it's you just, just the, the auto attack yeah it's just the auto attack so you mm. and that on its own doesn't do a heck of a lot of damage mm -hmm. so you com combine that with a bunch of spells. So yep. you raise someone in the air, then shoot them with that um, mm -hmm. standard attack, and it like does more damage. And then you drag them towards you, and then you do the fire thing, and like yeah. So there's this whole like you get on this roll of like. Um, does that get repetitive though? Um, it it can, but at the same time, you're also getting, uh, depending on how many um, characters are around you, uh, you're also getting those counter alerts as well. Mm. Right. So those pop up and then, you know, you, you do a cool move to like counter something and that counter move also stuns the person that you're hitting. Yeah. So then that adds even more like damage to mm. it. So it, mm. it never gets, uh, the only time it actually gets like annoying is when you're fighting like a boss. And it's the same sort of combo. And it's the same over combo again. over yeah. and over. I was just going to ask basically like, do, do you feel that it is a little bit too formulaic in that sense? <clears throat> not not really you also have um not really because you also have uh <coughs> enemies can also put up shields is there uh, is there enough of a branching structure to the combat like so for example you you've you've established that you like to yeah shoot someone raise them up shoot someone pull them in yeah try them yeah right but if you if you're doing if you that raise them up is there is there a, is there another next spell that would be there's uh, there's as other, effective yeah there's a, there's situation. other there's other spells you have so there's um sure, I, I know there's other spells but like <laughs> yeah yeah but there's there, i mean there's other damage dealing spells yeah. like you don't have to like right like that to me is just the sort of standard combo you raise them up you shoot yeah. them a few times you drag them towards you you can like raise them up which uh means that any any attack next is going to do more damage so you can then hit them with like you're actually like strongest damage dealing spell yeah uh, it doesn't, you don't have to follow like this combat, but then you could still like drag them towards you or, or freeze them yeah. because I've recently got a freezing one. So, um, what I've been doing is like freezing people and then hitting them with this like fireball spell yeah. that is actually long range, not the, the smaller mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. flamethrower type thing that you have to drag people towards. So there's, uh, 
I, I'm as I've been unlocking more and more spells, I have been trying to experiment with like what more new combos. combos. Yeah, right. Um, yeah, that sounds kind of cool. Yeah, and there is the thing of like I was saying just before that people, the enemies will like raise up shields, um, so they're just like bubbles. Yep. Around and that blocks all damage mm. except for one type, which corresponds mm. to the color of the shield. Uh, You're not a fan. Uh, I guess it's it's fine. Yeah. So one of the things I did not like about Doom Eternal, we discussed okay, this in the past, yeah. was like enemy encounters that required a specific weapon or two. Well, they don't require. I uh, yeah, they do require. <laughs> <laughs> they re- require... What you're describing is a specific spell to counter the not the bubble, specific right? spells, a specific school of spells. Sure, but are there enough there that there's, are? There's enough there. Okay. Yeah, do they have yeah. ammo, or is it? Uh, actually, there. Yes. Okay. So, <laughs> part of the story, any any spo- spoiler maybe ahead for like the first, I guess like five minutes. Um, you discover that you can see and channel ancient magic, mm. and so you have um some ancient like magic abilities, and one of them is to just like cast down lightning. It's like this crazy as like pretty much a one shot. Um, kill to yeah. any enemy other than like a boss, um, and so on. And so you, you just spam that one. You just spam that one, but um, you <laughs> have ammo. So you, uh, as as you are fighting people, okay. as you kill them, they'll drop yeah. little little glowy orbs. Ah, uh-huh. uh, okay. You know, and so it's kind of like an ultimate. Yeah, yeah, it's you, like an ultimate, you and you gotta you gotta build it up. And your passives, you can get passives that um, add other actions that build up that. Um, right, mm-hmm. that bar. So I've got, I've got one where it's just like um, uh, I, I, can't, I can't even remember. Just just doing like counters will build up that bar, or yeah, like just that's, that's performing nice. combos will build yeah, up that bar. I like those mechanics. You know? uh, that's similar to like a God of War kind of thing, right? Where you get like the you know how you can go like ragey. Yes. And, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. You get more points into like if you counter better and stuff, you'll get yep. more points to yeah, yeah. able to rage again. Uh, Doom Eternal has a similar thing. Yeah. Some some I think there's two different things that can charge up when you do your executes. Okay. Um so I, I like those systems. Yeah. But things that will keep you engaged in the combat or at least reward re- reward you for being effective again. Mm. Yeah. Like the funny the funny thing is like um so I the the bar that is filling up, uh you have um when it's full, I can do two of these like ultimate attacks. Yep. When it's not full, I can like basically throw items at like like force. Okay. Force yeah. throw. <laughs> kind of right. Magically. Ma- throw. Magically like, throw. I, I was picturing a child just throwing rocks. Initially. It's it's very similar to control, <laughs> where you just have the ability to like pick up environmental pick up and environmental throw things and throw them. Yeah. Um, which I find weird because like. Wizards are doing that all the time, but like for some reason, that's a, like a special thing. <laughs> um, maybe it's because you're doing it without actually casting a spell. Um, like you actually have a spell that does that exact thing, like uh, pick, okay. pick stuff up and but move you're them using and stuff. Your ancient but magics. you're using your ancient thing, so you're just like throwing <laughs> it with your hands. You're not using a wand kind of thing. Mm. Um, so you can do that, but um, I basically end up saving it for like the the like tougher bosses, which uh, which, which I use the the ultimate for. So it's either a one one shot kill or like two shot kill mm. or um, with a boss uh, because I because I barely use that um, in the last like big boss fight I had I was like holy heck I'm like doing all my combos and stuff and yeah. like and some of my spells have no effect on it because it's like a giant guy so like levitating it didn't do anything yep. and like dragging mm-hmm. it towards me didn't do anything so I'm just like hitting it with like the few kind of like damage dealing spells I can from a distance and I'm yep. like. Man, I'm just like chipping away at its health. Mm. It's like a it's like a Dark Souls boss here. Mm-hmm. And then I realized, wait a minute, I've got my ancient magic thing. So yeah. I hit that, took out a huge chunk of its life. Then it like went into a different phase and like popped out little little other enemies that could like <laughs> recharge my um, uh, recharge yeah. my yeah. thing. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I see what's going on yeah. here. Like, and I mean, is that did that feel good or was that kind of like a little bit too on the nose? It felt it. It was a little bit on the nose, but it was it was a thing of like, oh yeah, I can do this. I forgot, like I can actually <laughs> like, do this. And I I I do wonder, like, here's some more speculation from they from no research. They made sure that this was a boss fight that forced you. Or well, no, it it it, it would definitely make sense that that 
specific boss fight was like that because it's in an area that is related to ancient magic. Right. So you're exploring an ancient magic gotcha. dungeon. And then I'm like, well, it makes sense that like you're supposed to beat this boss using this ancient magic. So let me ask you, Blake, why, why did you fail to consider that until late into the boss fight? <laughs> well, not late into the boss fight. It was like, I don't know, like a minute into it. I'm like, man, this is... <laughs> oh, that's a while. I'm... <laughs> and just to, just to reconfirm, you had saved up your ancient magic yeah, power yeah, yeah and you had it ready i had it ready i had it ready to go and but you got, and you got things that build it up yeah yeah and i got things that build it up but here's the thing i've gotten into such a habit of like not using it um yes. not yeah you know, like saving yes. it up because i only get two attacks two ultimate attacks yeah it, right but it's a boss i know <laughs> it's a, blo- but it's I a had, boss again i had gone into such a habit <laughs> of not using it that is that is sort of the sort of uh I guess one of the risks of that kind of system. I mean, is isn't you... isn't this the the Skyrim thing of like holding on to Infinite things potions. and then yeah, yeah never using them? He, um, yes and no. This is I mean at least in Skyrim, I mean, yeah. When you drink them, they're gone or whatever, right? Yeah, yeah. Whereas, but this is an actual game mechanic. This, this that... is a thing that you can recharge yeah. in combat. <laughs> like it's pretty much designed. For, it's special built for the purpose that you're ignoring it for. Yeah, yeah but and you still might need it more <laughs> later. So you got to I... save it. But for what? You don't know. You're not going to get yeah. it. Well, there might be a boss. <laughs> yeah. Use them <laughs> the boss so you can reach the next boss. Well, no, I mean, the next boss. <laughs> <laughs> but to make it worse, too, yeah. that boss is definitely specifically designed yeah. for that ability. <laughs> uh, and I'm just like, not using it. But I don't want to yeah. waste it. I might yeah. get a bigger boss later. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. But also, I just forgot about it. Because yeah. the only thing that like reminded me of it was like, yeah, an icon above its head being like, hey, you could perform this on it. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, okay, of course. <laughs> um, I read it. Um, a friend of the podcast, Carl, mm-hmm. uh, sent me an article about combat in God of War. Oh, yeah. And uh, the, like the most recent God of War Ragnarok. Yep. And uh, or all, systems in that game as well. Like apparently there's like lots and lots of different weapons, lots and lots oh, yeah. of upgrade paths. Oh. Um, just like a ton of stuff, ways to like, customize it, your character and followers and all sorts of stuff mm-hmm. and all these weird interactions where like you can uh, lots of things that will proc or increase the chance of proccing special effects on the weapons mm. and um and the article is basically like and i never used any of these things and i never felt compelled to uh-huh. and i went online and watched some like pro streamers who were very very good at the game and they didn't either really mm-hmm. um so is it uh, just is it just that like conserving ammo feel? I th- I think it's that uh, the core combat ultimately ends up being more efficient, mm, okay. and um, and it's not really worth bothering yeah. until you absolutely have to. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I see. Especially if you're just trying to speed run the game or or do whatever you like. Yeah, um, that's interesting then. And that's what made me think of that's what that's what your story made me think of is like you <laughs> you get bogged down in the core combat cycle, mm. and you've got a, like an ultimate ability or whatever. Yeah, uh, and because you're used to saving it, yeah, and because it's a, a resource, yeah, and a powerful resource, you don't it, it, it you forget about it. Mm. Yeah, I mean that that is it. It's forgotten about because I went through so long in the game of not having those yeah. talents that recharge it. Where yeah. you would have to only recharge it by Bills some enemies drop, mm. like I think larger enemies drop orbs or something yeah. that allow you to recharge it. Yeah, you'd have to, especially if if you don't know how frequently you can recharge it, mm. you, you would get in the pa- of the habit of, of saving it. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's interesting. Yeah. I do wonder, though, um, more speculation, uh, if I will actually get a larger... Um, resource pool for that um, ability, or if it's just I'm um, only Always ever going to get yes, yeah, so only ever get to be able to do two at mm. once. It seems like it would be the kind of thing where uh, I don't know though, because if, if they're giving you more and more mechanisms to recharge it faster, yeah, increasing yep. capacity might be redundant. Yeah, maybe you've got access to the talent tree. <laughs> yeah, no, I should just look for. Presumably, there. you've looked. but also, but also like a lot of <laughs> like I do. Feel Feel like these ancient magic abilities are kind of separate from that, and maybe yeah. more story related of okay. unlocking. Yeah. So you, I might go through a dungeon and be like, "Hey, now you've got like double the amount." I'm like, "Okay, right." Did, is it the sort of game where you tend to just through naturalistic play max all those things out anyway? So, um, as an example, mm. in Doom Eternal, there's like upgrade systems for your suit, yeah, and for your weapons, yeah, 
And if you are just playing effectively, mm. you're going to actually get more resources than you need. Um, and, like, you'll be able to cap everything out, and then yeah. you'll still have, like, capacity to get more of these things. Um, that's what I wonder. Like, so back to the thing about levels is that I don't know what the max level is. Because if you're getting one talent point per level, yep. there's could potentially be a limited amount of talent points. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I'm like level 20 something now. I have no idea what the max Do you know if you is. can respec? Um, actually, don't know, but mm. I assume you must be able to somewhere. Well, that, that is a pretty good indicator of whether or not you can get everything. Yeah. If you can respec, then there's a good chance that you'll have to make choices. Yeah. Whereas if you can't respec, just grind it out. Yeah, just, <laughs> just grind it out. Just get all the talents. Um, this... Do, do you want to know the answer to the what the max level is? Because I just realized I can Google it. Yeah. Oh, what? You're doing research? <laughs> doing oh, my research. God. Yep, okay. This isn't the podcast you, for that, Paul. You, you will be able to earn a total of 36 talent points. 36? What a weird hitting number. hitting the max level cap of level 40. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. Now, this okay. is according to Radio Times, so uh, if R- it's wrong, blame Radio me. Radio Times. Radio Times. <laughs> All right. Famously, the video game experts. It was the first result on Google, which is good enough for me. Yep. All right, they. It's a lot better than us just guessing. Us speculating. <laughs> oh, but that's so much fun. Yeah. <laughs> to be honest, I tried it out. Tried out this googling it thing. I'm not even that much of a fan. <laughs> I think um, it's a fan. I think our speculation was just a lot better. Yeah, yeah. We we were talking a little bit before the podcast um, about Zor Pilgrimage of the Slorfs, which we talked about last week. Yep. Uh, Paul, you you bought it and played a little bit. Yep, I played a little bit. Um, and Blake not using this important resource that is actually renewable kind of ties into a mechanic that you and I both discovered in Zor, which is you have these cards that are consumable. Uh, in other words, you use them once they're gone. Yep. And they're also the resources that you use to build stuff. So, yeah. And the consumable things are quite often like throwing it for one point of damage. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, which if you, if it's life or death situation, you know, great. But it's rare that it's a life or death situation, and it felt bad to use these things not knowing that you wouldn't get them back. And then once you understood that, it felt even worse. Yeah, <laughs> I, I definitely made the mistake of throwing a rock at someone. Yeah, to... um, I had the same experience where it was like this is, it's a bit. It, it it felt like it was just kind of clogging my hand, and it, it was like more discard fa- fodder. Oh, yeah, than... that was the other annoying thing is that like you actually keep drawing them when what you really want to draw is something else. You can you once you discard. A card that is either exhausting, uh, exhaustible or consumable, I believe it doesn't get shuffled in again. But you still got to discard that one time. Yes. Which is a, a full turn. It's a full turn, yes. Um, which is, you know, as you said, kind of annoying. Mm. Um, well, they've changed that. <laughs> yep. So now with those things, uh, they exhaust. You can use them once and then... You get them back again. So that seems so, so much more fun. Yeah. Because, like, it was satisfying to throw the rock. It was just also really disappointing afterwards to not be able to craft the thing that I was saving the rock for. Yep. Fully. Oh, and quite often when you're crafting stuff, it's not just, just the rock you need. It'll be that you also need, like, logs or something as yes. well. Yes, yeah. So you, you need to keep that rock around for yep. when you come back yep. with the extra logs you need to... Yeah, you... When you're managing your deck, you can store stuff, stuff sort of. But yes, the, it it was a problem, mm. and it's no longer a problem, which is great. Yes, yeah, this, is, is, this is a sign of a good developer, if you mm. ask me. Yeah. Um, the other mechanic that I was never overly fond of was that it was hard to distinguish between resources, uh, and cards in some ways. Like, you you can pick up sticks, mm. which are a resource, but aren't a card. But then you can pick up branches which are both a resource and a card. Hmm. Yeah. Um, and so it was just a, that uh, inconsistency, I guess, and the fact that you would consume this card when you used it was a bit frustrating. Mm. Um, now that it's not consumed, I think it's less frustrating. It's like a, It feels more like a cool bonus. Yep. Here's a resource that is useful also mm. in this game. Um, I did, speaking of like the resources side of it, I quite liked how... You would hover over random things once you got into a map to see, like, how you interact yep. with them, whether yep. they are, like... This can be harvested uh, or destroyed, and if it's yeah. harvested, you get a thing. And, and it's, it's not destroyed. immediately clear from how they look, so you get, like, to 
you kind of scope out the area yeah. before you do any actions to see yeah. what you can get from each thing. You do eventually learn. Like they, they are visually consistent, so there are stumps that will you can't harvest them, and you can't you don't you're, you harvest them and you don't get anything. But then there's stumps that you harvest them and you get bark, for example, and yep. they look different. Okay. Um, but yes, like the, especially when you enter a, a biome for the first time mm. and you're confronted with all these new plants and pools and rocks and, and it all looks kind of cool like uh, i really like, like the art style of it. Yeah. yeah anyway like yeah wizards uh yep i'm <laughs> wait, 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 wait. yep uh we're, we're just, paul and i are just hanging out <laughs> talking about this cool game that we got did you get that game no i didn't oh shame well i i, I have this thing like i mentioned this uh maybe before the podcast yeah. that and maybe I have mentioned it more times in the podcast that like I always have this habit of like getting two thirds of the way through the game and then starting to play a new game. Yep. Like I've just done that with Control, right? Like I've gotten um, two thirds of the way through that, and yep. now I'm playing Hogwarts. How's Doom going? <laughs> <laughs> Same thing. Same thing. Like it's a problem. Is it actually that you start playing a different game, or is it just that you're done with the previous one? Because I I. I will stop playing a game. Yeah. Once I'm nearish to the end of it, just cause. Yeah. I, I won't go start playing a different game. I just actually stop playing the game that I'm enjoying playing because I'm near yeah. the end and I don't want to finish. Me, it. Yes. I, I, I did that with <laughs> I did that with The Witcher. Like I really love The Witcher so much, and I got. <laughs> Have through, you ever beaten it? I got well. I finished like the main, yeah. the, the actual like vanilla. Yeah. Uh, mm. Played like the first DLC, second DLC, got like halfway through, and it just stopped playing because I'm like, mm. I don't want it to be over. I I totally get that instinct. I got good news, guys. Yeah, the game stays around afterward. I don't believe you. You can you can <laughs> you can start a new game. You can just do side quests. <laughs> it, it, doesn't, it doesn't get removed from your hard drive it's like, immediately. It's, it's like Zelda. Like I've not gone back to Zelda since I beat it. I I did all of the temples and all the DLC yeah. except for like the master sword one, which is like virtually impossible and on in master quest. Oh, right. Yeah. Um, and I still sometimes load it up and just run around and collect resources. It is like it's it, a joy it, to move through that world. It is such a cool game. But like once I beat it, I was like, oh, I don't have anything. I don't have anything I'm leading towards now. That's, that's fair. Yeah. But, uh, did you get the DLC? Yes. Did you beat Did you play the DLC? Yeah. Yeah. I got the bike. Oh yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. We we talked about this yeah, that I'd gone actually. through all that that DLC yeah. with those like really cool boss fight at yeah. the end, and yeah. then I went and fought Ganon and was like, oh boo, this is like yeah. way too easy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That to me is the biggest flaw of Zelda is it has a weird reverse difficulty curve where the <laughs> the better you do elsewhere in the game, the easier yeah. that final boss becomes, like yeah. significant. That is it is funny that, um, but I guess it's all to like. Like because you can uh, just go and fight Ganon straight away, yeah, and beat him, then it's that's always know. an option. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's, that's a bit like you can just. I mean, we've we've talked about it that you can just go fight Ganon at any point, but it doesn't feel <laughs> right to yeah. me. It feels like you have to go get all the divine beasts, and then yeah. you have to be like super prepared because everyone is telling you how dangerous he is. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and <laughs> if you want, you can just go in with a stick. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um. Uh, this actually touches upon something I wanted to ask you, Blake, which yep. is, so you discovered you've got talent points mm -hmm. and spell slots, and now that you've unlocked all these spell slots, um, has the game gotten better or worse in your mind? Better. Interesting. Better. Um, but uh, not necessarily for unlocking the, um, it, yes, it's a combo. Okay. Because I unlock those spell slots, and I'm yep. like, great, this is great, but then... I found that the default controls, yep. switching between those spell slots, uh, I would get confused. Uh, uh, it was it was a real real pain. Yep. So I downloaded a mod that allowed me to to change my controls. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. Um, so much. You had a mod for that? Yeah. <laughs> come on, guys. I and feel like heaps on. of it's, games launch with just really bad controls. It's 2023. Yeah. Like <laughs> like the controls are just like so. Uh, it's, it's, um, you hold down trigger and then your like, uh, what are they called? Buttons? <laughs> <laughs> Boy, Blake, uh, I, I sure hope they're buttons. <laughs> I sure hope so. <laughs> what are they called? Yeah. You, you hold, you hold down. You hold. What, what are those soft groundies? <laughs> the, little, little domers? Those little, those little M&Ms that are on your controller. 
Um, <laughs> like little like little skittles. A's and B and B's. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, you hold you hold down uh, trigger, and then the buttons correspond to your your four spell slots that you your yep. four spells that you've got. Yeah. Mm. Um, and to switch between that means you hold down trigger, and then the uh, D pad up, down, left, right. Yep. Um, switches between uh, your spell sets. That's all uh, cool. okay. Right. So you have to make pre- like preset combos. Yeah, yeah. So you so you make yeah you you like set, got your you combo set them set up and your yeah. utility set. And I'm sure like. Uh, I'm sure, like, the more I played, I might get used to it. Yeah. But I was having such a hell of a time. Like, when you're in the mm. middle of combat and there's, like, a, when it's an intense yeah, combat going on, mean, mean yeah. like, I I would forget what I'm doing and end up just defaulting to using the same four spells over and over. Yep. So I've changed it up now where um, left trigger, um, you ha- if you hold left trigger, you have a, another set of four spells popped yep. up. So basically, I've got like eight spells that are like very easy to access. Yeah. Um, and that's been a hell of a hell of a mm. like thing. That is also probably how it should be. Yeah. Yeah, because <laughs> left left trigger otherwise is just like look around or yeah, like it's just zoom in and like aim kind of thing, like mm. manual aim. And this game has like pretty decent auto aim, so you basically never ever need to do that. <laughs> um, Zelda just has like a sliding weapon menu. Like in the middle mm. of combat, it slows down time a little bit. And yeah, yeah. You can slide through all your weapons. Um, so uh, the reason I asked about this, by the way, is because my experience with Zelda was mm-hmm. when I discovered you could expand your oh yeah storage capacities. Um, the game got a lot easier. Yep. And in some ways, that was kind of a, a, a bad experience. Like having that extremely confined set mm. of things. Um, I think a little bit of growth would have been good, but. Like, you go from, I think, storing, like, four weapons to up to about 20 or something like that. I don't think you get to 20. I think it's about 20. Is it? I think it's somewhere around there. Yeah. It's a Maybe lot. Maybe it is. It is a lot, though. Um, and uh, I felt there was, like, that the, the tactical confines of having such a limited mm. pool in a game where weapons can break, especially, yeah. was very interesting and made for, like, fun boss encounters where, mm. like... My weapons were breaking, and I had one weapon left, and I didn't know what to do. And like, <laughs> and then you have to, I guess, just use your your abilities and like hope. Exactly, yeah, yeah. It, it forced a lot I, more creative combat. Yeah, I think like there's, I think Zelda was the most fun in the beginning when you had the limited amount. Yeah, and then on that island when you were also when you had to restart, restart, even tight island. Yeah, oh, yeah, so good. Um. Because there's definitely something about it. it's got this survival feeling to yep. it of like you just have to s- scrounge your yep. way through whatever you things. can. Yeah, get yeah. And then as the game goes on, yeah, you unlock all these weapons, and then you never really, you never actually ever run out of weapons. Right. Um. By the end, like I had so many, um, what are they? Ancient weapons for dealing with um, with the with the robots and yep. stuff. Yep. Um, they became like trivial in the yep. end. Like I remember when I defeated my first. Like what were they called? Guardians. Yeah, guardians. The, was it guardians? The I think, the, I think, the, I think it was the robot the, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The little robot guys. Yes. I think they're called. Guardians. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the first time I defeated one of those, not and I wasn't using a um an ancient weapon. Yeah. And I was like, holy hell, I've just like achieved something. Yeah. And then cut to the end when I'm just like one shotting them pew, with arrows. Pew, pew. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Where yep. they become like nothing. Yep. I mean, it's cool to feel that. Yeah, there's there's a really effective pro- power progress? fantasy there, yeah. but uh, but there is a there, you lose something. Yeah, you do. Like when almost everything loses its threat, then the game kind of uh, like nothing nothing feels dangerous. Well, it's you know, just, nothing. It loses that element of choice, I guess, and and that that you it, your your considerations when you enter combat completely change mm. and become minimized, which um, can be can be good. Because you don't necessarily want every you don't want every like Bacoblin, for example, yeah, to feel like a, oh I need to really pay attention. Here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there was something nice about I've got four weapon slots mm. and um, how, do I want to fit in this fire sword? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Or do am I happy with this like good spear? Yeah. Like, I think limited inventory spaces is more interesting of a mechanic than durability. But the combination, I think, was really effective. But I, I, I like the durability it, thing. Like, I hate it in games. Eh? Mm. I hate that. Like, one of my options will go away. 
and but having to plan around that. I, I see where you're coming. Did you play Zelda? Yep. And it, what, you didn't like the durability? Nope. Throughout the whole thing, you were just like... Annoyed entitled. at durability the wow. entire time. Because like I find a thing that I like using, and then it breaks, and mm. it's like, okay, I've got to find another one. And then you end up like... Yeah, just... But I... But I loved that I didn't... It, it, what it meant was I was never... I, there was never a moment where I was like, "Great, I've got my my build is 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 done." Yeah, um, and it was never um, there. Were, there were combat encounters where, you know, especially early on, I was forced to look around and use the environment, mm. um, look at my positioning, uh, try and like get my opponent's weapon, like all sorts of like crazy things that mm. I had never had to really consider in another game. Yeah, and it's just because of the durability and the combination of durability and limited selection magnified that so definitely early on if you fight if you're finding like that durability mechanic frustrating then the slow like the smaller kit you have available the worse that's going to be that yeah <laughs> but i i thought yeah. it was fantastic i loved what it forced me to do to be effective yeah i, I just found it frustrating it, it, that never feeling like you can reliably go into a combat situation because your weapon might break and then you all of a sudden at a disadvantage and sure like you might be able to find something to make that work yeah but you also might not and then yep but I mean, that's exciting to me yeah, yeah. i <laughs> what i ended up with was like instead of like one weapon that i'm like this is the one it was like an arsenal it was like this is my yeah. main weapon but also uh if i'm it depends on what i'm fighting like there'll be like i have a weapon that's like super strong so i'll save using that and just sort of have a have a, a few weapons that are like my standard weapon. Yeah. And then when I, I come into an encounter where I need to use my strongest weapon, I start using that and I start cycling through my strong my selection yeah. of strongest weapon. Yeah. yeah. You know. Um having the master sword. Yeah. Uh created a baseline as well. Yeah. Whereas like I um uh, I know in a pinch I'll probably have my master sword around. Mm. Cuz that comes it, yeah. it, it And then there was a thing of um the different element swords could yeah. like one shot Certain things. Like certain el uh, certain yeah. other elements, you know, like yep. the, like a fire sword would just one shot a uh, like ice lizard yep. or whatever. Also, the bow properties I thought were really interesting. Some things would have like yeah. really long range. Some things would have short range. Some things would multiply arrows. Yeah, like you could. I mean, some things have. I like the multiplying arrows thing. Like, yeah, as just being like a thing you can get. Yeah, that was the coolest one with um the bomb arrows. Yeah, where you just fire like <laughs> and you shotgun yeah. things basically. Yeah. And then when that breaks, you're like, oh man, that was like my favorite like thing. <laughs> um, have, you, have you got more to talk about wizard wise? Um, I don't think so, but like I'm been exploring the world a lot more. So more than you were before more than, when dude, you were skipping the, the, the world is like quest. shockingly big. Uh -huh. Like oh, that's cool. So so f what I'd explored in that like first like 15 hours that I'd played was basically Hogwarts and the surrounding area. There's whole, like, towns and villages and hamlets and, like, all sorts of stuff out in the wilderness. And yep. now that I got my broom, it, traveling is, like, a lot faster. Um, so I had, a, I had a quest that was, like, a, part of the main quest, which was, like, to travel to this, uh, this tower that's, like, way, way further out than anywhere I traveled before. Yep. Um, and so, like, traveling there, I, you know... I, I was still flying there, right? Um, but I saw that there was a town on the way. So I yep. stopped there, got into like a whole bunch of quests related to this town, carried on, found found more like quests. It was it felt like a journey getting to it. That's and cool. which which I'm glad because like having a broom where you can fly, you could just like zip straight mm. to these places. But they do this quite a cool um mechanic where uh your broom speed is fairly slow unless you have unless you're like uh boosting it so you have uh okay and which means just like you just go extra fast it's just like a, okay, a regular so you got, you got, like you got a fast it's like it's like putting mode. the nos on or something mm -hmm. right yeah. um and that runs out so you're okay you're you're going along does it recharge it recharges okay. and it, it's like a gallop mode yeah it's like a gallop it's like yeah. a gallop and that doesn't feel great when you're flying along and you have to like uh, you're going you, to a specific you, destination. Yeah, far especially away. if you're going far. But so it forces you, exploration a little bit. It does, but they also do an interesting thing where if you fly low to the ground, yeah, that um, that gallop resource doesn't deplete. 
Huh. Okay. And uh, flying low to the ground means that you encounter and see more things. things. Yeah. Because you can fly yeah. quite high. You yeah. Know? You can just be like a an airplane and you're not seeing anything yep. other than trees and, and stuff just fly by below you. But if yep. you're low to the ground, you're encountering stuff, enemies, you can fly by enemies and they'll like shoot at you and stuff. Yep. Like you have a higher, much better chance of like That's cool. encountering really fun like things. That. Yeah. Is it so much better than like artificially making it so that you can't go high up or anything? Yeah, yeah. And it's just like forcing you to choose yeah. to engage. So you with can the go, game. yeah, and then that's it. You can go as high as you want, but you'll be slower. Yeah. And if you're low to the ground, like if you're skimming along the ground, it also just feels great. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Um, hey, Paul. Yo, you been playing anything? Uh, <laughs> or little bits and pieces. Um, okay. Obviously, more super auto pets because you're to. addicted. Yes, I have yeah. a problem. Um, uh, I did start playing Vampire Survivors again on my phone. Okay, yes, they, they did played, a free-to-play version. Yeah, so I played yeah. it a bunch on Steam a while ago, but it was yep. very early on. I yep. added, like, a lot more stuff. Oh, yeah. Um, and I've I, got that 100% on, Z, on Steam. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so that's, it's kind of fun. I feel like they made it a lot easier at some point. Maybe it wasn't hard to begin with, and, and it was just the learning curve. I think. I think it's... A little bit of both, like the learning curve certainly is a, is an element, but also um, there are just more options, yeah, and more purchasables. And um, having said that, I don't, it's not <clears throat> another kind of game that really needs to be difficult. It's just very like you turn your brain off after about halfway through. And yeah, yeah, and you just watch the you. end. You don't even need to move. <laughs> yeah. That's great. It's like the start's kind of hard, and then all of a sudden it's just like, oh, I'm a god now. And, <laughs> and there's then, um there's a mechanic they added. Uh, the golden eggs. Were you were you, were you playing when they added that mechanic? No. So, uh, certain like special enemies uh, that you generally find are sort of the far perimeters of the map mm. will drop golden eggs when they die. Yeah. And they grant permanent upgrades for that character, and they're usually pretty minor, like it's like one percent damage or something like that. Yep. But uh, they stack up over time, and you can buy them from like the there's a eventually like a a merchant that will show up in mm. maps and you can buy them quite in bulk and uh you know when you have your like 900 eggs on a character it's like twice as powerful yeah <laughs> in, in the starting state <laughs> and all those like additional bonuses will multiply with that so mm. it, it just gets ridiculous and so you can turn your brain off a lot earlier <laughs> yeah i did wonder because it feels like um well, in particular, it feels like the gold I'm getting is, like, way, way faster than when I played mm. on Steam. Because I've only done, like, three complete things. Cause yeah. I, I literally picked it up this morning. Mm. Um, and I've unlocked, like, most of the purchasable upgrades. They added a... After three runs. The, the gold rush mechanic, I think is what it's called. Yeah, like, there's a, that. A special golden clover that will just turn all of your kills into also gold. Yeah that really accelerates that gold growth. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. Uh, are you having fun with it? Yeah, so far. I mean, I haven't been playing that much. Yeah. Because um, I'd planned to try and find a survival game to play and just couldn't. Right. Why survival? Oh, I just had the itch to play like a base building sort of survival, mm. something super casual where you, you know, slowly build up a base and yeah. I just haven't played a game like that in ages and I used to quite like them. Um, have you heard of Minecraft? Yeah, well, I mean, that's <laughs> what I ages ago would have played. Yeah, How about Terraria. I've Did never you... actually played Terraria. Terraria is fantastic. Like, have you I, played Terraria? Yeah, I never, I could never get into it. Really? No, <laughs> I was like, I wish, I wish it had a, a third dimension to this game. Yeah, uh... or it, I, I'd be quite happy with the two D one if it was top down oh. <laughs> instead, instead of the sideways segment. <laughs> I see your reasoning, both of you, um, and you're both wrong. Um, no, that game is really good. Uh, the well, I played that years and years and years ago, and over time they've just added more and more bosses and mm, more yeah. biomes and more mechanics. It and... was the first game I ever bought on Steam. What? Yeah. Really? Yeah. That but that came out in like 2011 or something. Like yeah, first game I ever bought on Steam. Did you not play Half Life Two? No. You know, but also Amazon. you could just buy what? the. I had I had Steam games, but I had not bought them on Steam. Okay. You know, I had bought uh, them in yeah. stores, them a store, and then it's and, and then it just installs wow. on Steam. So what made actually, Terraria? I think that's how I got Orange Box as well. I think I actually bought the physical thing. Yeah, me mm. too. 
Yeah. <laughs> you no, know, I wonder what my first like on Steam purchase was. Then I don't, I honestly don't know. Mm. I think it predated Terraria though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what made Terraria your pick? It was I had. Uh... You're like I oh, had no. early access survival. Oh, I can't wait. <laughs> How did you know? I feel like I'm really gonna like this combination. <laughs> Yeah, that's me, like, just 10 years ago, yeah. right? Like that. I... Yeah. <laughs> you, were, you were a bit of a late bloomer. <laughs> as far as I know, you're, you're still just buying the early access survival game. So, so yeah, well, the true. voice was different. Yeah, the voice, yeah, the voice the is different. The sentiment was very yeah. much yeah. still the same. Yeah. Um, it was, it was a Physically, comp- you've changed a lot. Mentally, not at all. <laughs> mentally, regressed. <probably. laughs> and this all started from me trying to buy an early access, of, yeah. trying to find an early access yeah. survival game yeah. to buy. Yeah. <laughs> um, Paul, I reckon you should try Terraria. I probably should. It's look. There's there is a weirdness to it being two D, but the boss fights are really satisfying, and like the level of advancement you can achieve in that game, like there there are so many armor tiers and weapon tiers and secrets to discover, and uh, like the gear system is really solid. It has yeah. a it has an awesome progression, yeah, uh, with these boss fights that like Minecraft just doesn't have. Yes, like I don't know why Minecraft hasn't implemented anything like this. They they kind of have at this point well, like, with, the end, got... with the end with the end the dragon or end, whatever. End the dragon but, and the I mean, wither is, and there's well, all these other. That variables. is such a so ridiculous of... like amount of like effort to go into yes. doing that. Like so much of Minecraft was mods though. Like mm. you would essentially be like sort of. Picking what style of game you want to yeah. play, yeah. just based off like what mods you are playing with it. Yeah, but the the core game structure, they do have some bosses and progression elements, but it, uh, yeah, Blake is right, is not near Terraria's level. Yeah. <laughs> um, what's that other? What's that other game that's like Terraria, but also with space? Starbound. Starbound. Yeah. Same team. I, so I, I played um Starbound. It's the same team, right? Is it? I think it is. Relogic. I mean, it looks so much the same. I'm. Be surprised if it wasn't. I played Starbound uh, when it was like super early access. So did and they I. Had, like, two versions of the file thing, like ah. where, where they had like they had one app, and then like, it was too unstable, so they made a, a oh, different wow. version of it. Something oh, I don't remember that. But uh, it was fun, but I, it felt bad just abandoning your base on a planet. Well, I think they like I haven't played since early Can access you either. Build <sighs> most of your base on the ship. Yeah, I think they have changed it because when, in early access, yeah, you're right. Like, <coughs> you basically just had a um, you, you'd build a base on a planet, and yeah. the ship was like l- very limited space. And I think they have like changed oh. that in years. Paul's, since. Paul's googling. He's, oh no, I was oh, just no. gonna look on Steam to see when I bought it because yeah. I need context of when I played that, it. That was a constant thing in <laughs> yeah. in when I was playing it in early access. I a lot of feedback I and, and uh, comments I saw people making was like. Uh, why can't we like build on the ship? Yeah, it's it's inter- I, you could build on the ship a little bit, but, but it was, it was small. very small, very very small. So maybe I played a little bit later then. It's a, uh, it's an interesting thing because like this is this is something that survival games broadly struggle with mm. is oftentimes the best part of a survival game is that initial struggle. Yeah, it's uh, figuring out how these mechanics work, surviving your first few nights, mm. then that uh, growth and progression. And the mechanics of like harvesting and returning and yeah and, and progressing that way, uh, and so a lot of games try to address have tried to address this in various ways. Like Icarus, for example, has like the the session based stuff, mm. uh, and mm. I think early Starbound was probably an attempt at addressing that, in that you would just straight up abandon your base. Yeah, and... but that doesn't feel good. No, but that yeah. isn't that interesting. Yeah, like, yeah. Like what is the it solution feels? Here? It feels like why put any effort into building anything. And I think Icarus has the same issue. Although, from what I've heard, they've got different modes now that yeah. maybe things are like more permanent or something. Like I don't know. I don't know either. But it's it's an interesting thing. Like yeah. there's clearly a there's a niche here where the struggle is the fun part, but you don't want to lose your possessions. Yeah, you don't want to. How do it. you how do you unify that? Yeah, I don't know. Conan um, does an interesting thing, um, which which was super jank when I played, but. Um, they would have uh, massive NPC raids on your yep. um, structures, so at a, and and you knew when these were coming, yeah, uh, because there was like a progress bar or something, yeah, um, and so that made you always on edge, yeah, uh, and fortifying, yeah, and fortifying, and you, and you spend a lot of time, yeah, doing all that, and then the big raid comes and you're 
finding them off and they could still get in through like places you didn't expect. Like yep. it makes that quite interesting. Um, however, I have seen that um, players have figured out ways to um, automate uh, it basically. Yeah. Or automate it and also take advantage of like where enemies spawn. Right. So that they automatically fall into like pits. <laughs> that, yeah, like, yeah. And, yeah. And then you're just like, Oh, this now you've just, you've, you've pulled back. Yourself your curtain yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, Vampire Survivors. No, not Vampire Survivors. V Rising. <laughs> the other oh, Vampire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Vampire Survivors is what V Rising should have been called, right? Like, because functionally, I yeah. V Rising. I don't think V Rising yeah. is a survival game about vampires. Okay. So Vampire Survivors is a much. It better does. Game. It does. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, and, early and on, Rising I was getting... should be what Vampire Survivors is called. <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> yeah. It's got really, nothing to do with survival. Um. Maybe there was like a um, trademark <laughs> problem where they just like both of them took the wrong. <laughs> <laughs> they, they drew their names out of a hat. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so V Rising um, is an interesting case because you are incentivized to create a new base mm. by the limitations on travel. Mm -hmm. And oh, that's a good one. Uh, have, have you played? No, but uh, just a good solution to that problem. Yeah. So like, there's like. Th Four, I think, different continent chunks right now, something like that. Mm. And in theory, you can just plop your base down somewhere and, uh, you know, have all of your stuff there. And every time you want to go and get resources, you just ride out to wherever you need to go or teleport to that location. But because you can't bring most resources through the teleportation mechanic, you have to ride back. Yep. Um, or, or run back or whatever. Um, and um, that's really, really annoying the further out you get. And so you're kind of incentivized to build your base closer and closer to your your sort of appropriately tiered resources. Yep. Um, which was uh, initially frustrating, but is kind of fine now. Mm. Um, um, I, I only ended up building a bit like this as well. Uh, I only ended up building two bases, like the first one and the second one, and then like I kind of was fine with the inconvenience for the second one. I feel like we ended up doing three. The last time we played. Right. It's an interesting mechanic. I don't know that I love it. I don't think it's a perfect solution because the, the restrictions feel very arbitrary. Mm. Like, I can bring stone. I can teleport with stone. Yeah. But I can't teleport with planks. Or I... Yeah, or I that can, does sound... I can arbitrary. teleport with, like... Well, like... You know, I could, I could harvest a bunch of stuff, but I can't teleport mm. with scrolls or whatever that, like, mm. just drop. Or, it's mm. just... Can you, um... I can't remember, but can you... Are you... Are you talking about teleporting between your bases? Uh, no, there's so there's teleporters around the world, and you can also build a teleporter. Okay, if you built a tele if you built teleporters in your base, yeah, uh, do they still have those limitations? Yes. Oh well, that's annoying. Yes, it is. And that was actually the worst thing was I, I established the second base, mm. and in order for me to move resources from my first base, I would I could teleport to one base, and then I would have to just lug everything. Yeah, to the that's other. really then, annoying. Uh, it was. You should be able to, um, as a vampire, you should be able to have minions human minions that yep. that move you do have, stuff between you do get human minions okay but they are there to they they are essentially like uh idle resource collectors so oh, okay. you you can send them out on like raids to locations to get right. resources yeah yeah um but you you can't just like yeah <laughs> make them ferry things across. i um i played that game too late yeah you, you said that uh, i think there's like an update coming out in may hmm. and i suspect they're going to do a server wipes Okay. So yeah, but I think like my survival friends that I play survival games are done with it. Yeah, but Blake, you can I you and I can play. Oh Paul, yeah, pa Paul. Do hey, you yeah, play? I have been specifically trying to find a survival game. Yeah, yeah. Well, I've got news for you. <laughs> Terraria is. <great. laughs> um, uh, v Rising is like it's solid. Like it's it's a fun game. Mm. Um, I I have three bosses left. I think to oh, defeat, yeah. and yeah. I tried. I've tried all three, and I think I can pretty much take down one mm. of them sol solo. But the other two, I, th <laughs> but yeah. I think might be very right, specifically cool. tuned for a party of four. Oh my! Oh my god! <laughs> That's and rough. I was not having a That's good really time. That's really rough. Uh, I did like what I'd played of it, but um, it was essentially a solo game because yeah, my friends started yeah. a server, yeah, and then two weeks later I joined. Yeah, they had a giant castle, and uh, I was like, I'll just start my own castle here. Uh, and then they, I never saw them online ever. Yeah. Yeah. Did you, 
Was it was it a PvP server or PvE? I don't they have both. Probably probably PvP. Okay, I've only done PvE. And PvE sounds. PvE. I hate PvP in survival games. Yeah, I think I probably will as well. Uh, every time I see it, it's jank, and there's yeah. just some weirdness and some yep. exploit that means that people can just break your stuff. Yeah, yeah. This is yeah. a game built to service the PvP side of that, but yeah. uh, because of the the nature of like a server that's on 24 hours a day Mm -hmm. like what a bummer it would be to like spend all this time building your (laughs) awesome base and then because you have a job you log in and it's gone that by the next morning and it's just like you have no reasonable way to counteract that (laughs) i i told you some of the stories that me and my friends did an arc right where we just like robbed our neighbors. Yeah. 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 It's so much fun when you're doing it. Yeah. And then I remember like us getting robbed and we were like, damn it, yeah. <laughs> we have to move somewhere else. It's yeah. hidden away. Ark sucked because you would spend like 45 minutes taming a dinosaur. Oh, God. And then you would like take it back and then, yeah, you come back the next day and it's just like gone. Yeah, and it's just dead. dead. dead yeah, yeah. So also, that game like just had weird clipping issues with terrain. Oh, that too. game was. I lost raptors into that the game was and... so. That game was so jank. But also, like, I had so much fun in that game. It was <laughs> I great. think it's, it was important for the for the genre. Yeah. yeah. Paul, did you end up finding a survival game? Uh, I might play Grounded. Okay. Uh, I, I might don't know not play Terraria do. still. I don't know why. At this point, I just feel like I have to commit to this. <laughs> not playing Terraria. I really like Terraria. Terraria back in the... I, I might load it up again sometime soon. Yeah. But, uh, but Grounded does look really cool. Oh. I don't know anything about it. It's the one where you're like a tiny person, and the world is like there's the things you fight are like giant bugs. Okay, that sounds great. Um, yeah. It's honey, I shrunk the kids. Nice the survival in a back yeah. in a backyard. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. That sounds great. Um, I haven't actually played it. I've seen a few clips of people playing it. There's like boss fights where you're just fighting like a spider, and the spider yeah. is massive <laughs> because yeah. you're actually just really small. Yeah, it does seem cool. it does sound pretty neat. Um, yeah, that's. Is it multiplayer or single player? Should be multi- yeah, this is for sure multiplayer. Okay, because the person that recommended it to me was playing multiplayer. I think the three of us should choose the survival game. Yeah, could be V Rising, could be Grounded. Yeah, uh, when there's when we some... have time, let's make a let's make a base. This Sons yeah. of the Forest okay. has just come out as well. The game looks pretty broken still. <laughs> oh really? <laughs> well, just oh, so perfect for Blake then. Um, I, I was a huge fan of the Forest. Yeah, I've played it, got it. During a um, humble bundle thing, not yeah. knowing what it was, it was just part of the bundle. Oh yeah, loaded up the forest. The start of it was super spooky, and then you go into the world, and like it was one of the coolest sort of survival yeah. games um, I'd played at the time. And then nighttime comes, and it got scary as shit. Mm. Um, I, I, I had no idea what I was in for. Oh and, yeah, that's actually really cool. Like you just play a game, a survival game, blind like that. Like it was such a cool experience, and but. Um, it was quite broken at the time. Mm. Still, really enjoyed it and stuff. Yeah. But um, Sons of the Forest has only just become uh just gone into early access now. So I think it's probably oh, better it... waiting a little bit until. <laughs> I actually didn't know is it in early access. I'm pretty sure it's still early access. <laughs> uh, I it's like Blake's already shortlisting it. <laughs> <We're> <laughs> I just, uh, yeah, I just have a button on my phone and just purchased... it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'll remember this. God damn, we're going to all end up playing Sons of the Forest, aren't we? <laughs> no, let's not play that. Um, <laughs> I would, uh, what I was going to say, it's though. It's too early is, access, it's not. Um, that in the original The Forest, one of the biggest problems is that, like, there was just some super jank stuff going on with, like, mm. the physics and things. And some of the monsters would just freak out and start, like, oh. moving around in weird, broken physics ways. And you're, like, trying to defend your base against things that, yeah, uh, breaking the rules. Yeah, yeah. Um, I played uh, the forest a little bit with some of the environment guys at work. Yeah. Um, and we built a boat base, and that is the most jankiest thing to ever do, from what I've seen in that. <laughs> uh, if you build a boat base, if you're standing in the like, if you're standing in the boat, like, the floor, the boat will move around you. While you're oh. standing oh, there, no. right? It's, it's the movement plane in the yeah. It it, 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 it doesn't line up properly, and you can very easily just like fall, like right. slide out of the boat. Yeah, cool. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> very, very not. 
And they thought, let's make a sequel. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, All right. We're we're out of time. Uh, We didn't get to talk about the fact that I bought Cult of the Lamb. But I'll I'll, I'll talk about that maybe next week. Mm -hmm. Or, you know what? Listeners, you may never hear about it. But you should play Cult of the Lamb. We've all played that. I've played a little bit of it. Paul played heaps of it. Well, let's talk about it next week then. Yeah. Or two weeks from now. Two weeks. Yeah. Um, We've got some some comments and questions. Uh, Maybe we'll get to them next time. uh, Because... There's some that I think we need to discuss. Yeah. Off stream. Off sure. Off off mic. All right. Who's mic? Well, I'm sitting on him. <laughs> all right. right. Later, we'll, <laughs> once I'm not, let's discuss it. Right. The, the, the fourth member, Mike. Yeah. Is, uh... he's, he's here. In, he's be here in every episode. Uh, if you guys, if we did a video podcast, you guys would see. He's be like, why are they sitting? He's on very human quiet beings? and polite. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not sure he can like talk from under there. Yeah. Oh yeah, he might actually be dead. <laughs> um, okay, we'll be back in a couple weeks. All right. Bye. Uh, you know what? I forgot to say uh, that you can email us at friendsweekquestions at gmail.com. Which you just said it now. There okay, bye. Um, I bought Disco Elysium, but I played only about 15 minutes. I tried, we sort of started to play it uh, as like a duo. Ah, like uh, yep. I think that's how, that's not how Very you difficult it to do a uh, choose your own adventure with two people. Do you have a conflicting opinion? Uh, I reckon whoever's currently got the controller just has to commit. Ah, you reckon you pass it back and forth? Is yeah. Is that capturing it? Okay. Might try that. Um. I played some more of uh, Zor, Pilgrimage of the Slorfs. <laughs> I checked that out. I didn't end up playing that much of it. I basically yeah. just really wanted it to be a mobile game. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's, if if he goes that route, it's going to be an amazing... I, I emailed the developer and had a little chat with him. Oh, oh cool. did you? Yeah, um, and he's got some good plans. We made, we made fun of that game's name so much, but then I got home and I was like, what was the name? Oh, it was Zor. Yeah, pilgrimage yeah. of the sloths. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's onto something, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's a look. I really like the game. It's a stupid name, it but is, it does stick in your it's head. It's stuck. It's, it's, I think I think it does its job. It's a perfectly. little thorn. Yeah, now yeah. it lodged in my brain forever. Yeah. yeah, I actually I don't know. All I all I can think is like, oh, it's that slurfs game. Slurfs, <laughs> slurfs, <laughs> sloths. It's, there you go. Well, whatever. Slurfs. I'm like you an still insult. type it in. You still type it in, and you'll find it. Really? Yeah. If you go Slurfs or like yeah, Pilgrimage of the Slurfs, you'll find it. Hopefully. Yeah. Yeah. I typed that in. I just ended up watching episodes of the Snorks. The Snorks. Yeah. Who's the Snorks? Uh, oh, it was a cartoon Smurfs. that was on like early nineties. Yeah. No, okay. They were under, they were like <laughs> Smurfs, but underwater. And they like had snorkels. Cool. And they had snorkels, which were also underwater. How did they breathe? I don't they know. didn't breathe this. I guess maybe they. I think they did. Maybe the snorkels. But they were, I don't think it was very they scientifically. They weren't air breathing because their snorkels were fully underwater. Uh, Maybe the snorkels were for when they go to the surface. It's like they fill up with water and then. Maybe. Did they ever go on land? I'm sure they must have. I, I don't remember. I just remember it all being underwater. Yeah. But like SpongeBob has the same thing where everything's underwater and breathing. Yeah, that's true. In, in fairness, those are fish. And a sponge. A sponge. Yeah. And at least no, they, like they a bunch of them underwater. Are, like. At least the um, no, Sandy the squirrel yeah, has she, a helmet on. Yeah, at least she has that helmet and that dome. Um, How she got down there in the first there, place? I don't okay, know. but this fire's there. There's so. there's Pearl the whale, who we never see sir, breach. Hmm. Um, but but they can hold their breath for ages. Yeah. They're famous for it. Yeah. Whales. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Should we get started? Yep.